Okay, so now we'll move to the next part of our lesson, section six point five. Uh, so we are going to learn about <coughs> more about. We are going to learn more about expected value and variance of a function of x. Okay, so this if x is a discrete random variable and g is a function, then g x is also a discrete random variable. Why is g x a discrete random variable? Because x is a discrete random variable. You can calculate the expected value of gx using the formula expected value of gx is equal to the summation of gx multiplied by its respective probability of x. Actually, uh, it, uh, this is something quite simple. You know, this gx is a function of x, right? So what they're trying to say here is you multiply the gx value with, with its respective probability. So an example of that is the ex square, like gx could be x square. Do you get it? So e x square of e of g x is equal to the summation of g x times its respective probability. So for ex an example of g x would be e of x square. So in this case, g x function is x square. In that case, you take the summation of x square with its respective probability. Can you see? So it could be anything. This g x could be x cube. G x could be 2x. GX could be, you know, do you, do you get it? So it could be anything. Okay, it's a function of X. All you got to do is to multiply that particular value with its respective probability. That's all you got to do. Okay. Uh, this is a more general version of the formula for EX square. Yeah, that's what they're saying here. The GX uh, we use. So the, the a more general uh, version of the formula of EX square is what they've given here. For simple functions such as addition and multiplication by a constant, you can learn the following rules. If x is a random variable and a and b are constants, then the expected value of uh, ax plus b is equal to a times ex plus b. Okay, this is a really important rule. So the expected value of the expected value of ax plus b. The ex expected value of ax plus b will be equal to a times the expected value of x plus b. So they are giving you a direct way to get the answer by using the help of ex. Okay, can you see ax plus b is actually kind of like a transformation, right? You have your x discrete variable. So here your gx is ax plus b. Can you see? So in this case, there's an addition function. So you could uh, uh, so you could make a, a table for this ax plus b as well and multiply the ax plus b value with the respective probability, and and you could have got the expected value. So they are saying that instead of going in that manner, you can get the expected value directly by going through this formula. So it's a times expected value of x plus b. So this is actually one of the main rules you'll be learning in this particular lesson. Okay, so uh, I will uh, show you the, uh, you know, the proof of this. Let me uh, take you through a simple example to show you how to get the expected value in this given way and also how to use this shortcut. So to make things more clear to you. Okay, so let me uh, give you an example. Okay, so I'm going to do these uh, examples. So this is from exercise 60, question number one. So let me prove you how this rule works and how we can directly use this. The random variable x has a probability distribution given by, so x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, and the probability values are 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.4. Write down the probability distribution for y, where y equals 2x minus 3. So they're asking you to build another probability distribution. Can you see? So it's 2x minus 3. They had to build the probability distribution for 2x minus 3. How do we do it? So you have to calculate the y value for every x value. So when x is 1, what's the y value? When x is equal to 1, y equals to 2x minus 3, right? So 2 into 1 minus 3, what do you get for the y value? 2 into 1 is 2, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Guys, do you agree? Next, let's go to x equals 2. So I want you to get the y value for every single one of these x values. So x equals 2, you are, it are, uh, y equals to 2x, so that's 2 times 2 minus 3. That's y equals 2 times 2, that's 4, 4 minus 3, y answer is 1. Next, you take x equals 3 and get the y value. So y equals 2x uh, minus 3, so 2 times 3 minus 3, 
replacing x with 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Next one, x equal 4. When x equal 4, y equal 2 times 4 minus 3. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. Agreed? Okay, and now let's go for the table. So let's take a table of y values. So y value and the probability of y. Okay, so how do we get the y values? What are the y values we currently have? Minus 1, 1, 3, and 5. Isn't it? So asking us to make the probability table. So I'm creating the probability table. What about the probability values? How am I going to calculate the probability values? How am I going to calculate the probability values? How do I calculate the probability values? Yes. So you can see I get the y value minus 1 when x is plus 1, right? So actually the, the, the probability distribution is given for x. So the probability is only, uh, these probabilities are there to, to get this particular x value. For example, to get the x value 1, we have a probability of 0 0.1, a chance of 0.1. Isn't it? A 0 0.1 chance to get the x value 1. So even if, so if you're going for y value minus 1, you need to keep in mind the root of this. What's the root of this? Y value minus 1 occurs when x is 1. So the basically to get the probability to get y equal minus 1, we need to get x as 1. So which means the probability that we require here is the probability for x to be equal to 1. Because if x equals 1 only, you get y as minus 1. So probability of x becoming 1 is <clears throat> 0 0.1. And you see, we put the <clears throat> respective x probability because x is the one that has this table. If you want to get the y probabilities, you have to see for to get this particular y value, what is the x value that I require? And write the probability of that x value. Is this clear? That's really important that you understand that. So y value 1, when you get the y value 1, when x is 2. So what's the probability of getting x equals to 0 0.3? <clears throat> because to get y equal 1, x should be 2 first. x should be 2 first. And then automatically, immediately, y becomes 1. So probability of that happening, we need uh, this 0 0.3. Okay, and the next one, x equal uh, y equal 3, when x equal 3, that probability is 0 0.2. Finally, y is 5, when x is 4, probability of x is 4 is 0 0.4. So this is the probability distribution for y. Okay, this is the probability distribution for y, and in part B, they ask you to find the expected value of y. So how do you find the expected value of y? You take the summation of the uh, the probability uh, y value into the respective probability. So let's multiply the y value into its probability. So minus 1 into 0 0.1 plus 1 into 0 0.3 plus 3 into 0 0.2 plus 5 into 0 0.4. How much is it? Minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 5 into 0 0.4 is uh, 2, right? Add everything up. How much is the answer for EY? So the answer for EY is 2.8. Agreed? Okay. So this is uh, getting the EY value by using its uh, probability distribution. Okay, so now let's actually go for the verification of our equation. So what are we trying to do here? In part C, they are saying calculate EX and verify that expected value of 2X minus 3 is equal to 2 times EX minus 3. They are asking you to verify this. Okay, how do we do this? First in part C, we can actually get EX, right? How do we get EX? By using the original probability distribution, the X distribution. So how do you get it? You multiply that take the sum of the products of uh, uh, x into probability of x. So what is it? First one, 1 into 0 0.1 plus 2 into 0 0.3 plus 3 into 0 0.2 plus 4 into 0 0.4, right? So it's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 plus 1.6. How much is it? 2.9. All right, so time to check on the equation. Uh, so we are trying to prove E 
of 2x minus 3. Guys, so who is e of 2x minus 3? Who is e of 2x minus 3? Now we know who is 2x minus 3. We know 2x minus 3 is equal to y, right? So it was actually e of 2x minus 3. In other words, is ey. Do you agree with me? And who is ey? ey answer which is found as 2.8. Do you agree? Okay, let, now let's get the value of 2 times ex minus 3. Shall we do that? So 2 times who is ex? ex is 2.9 minus 3. Let's type this in the cal. 2 times 2.9 is? 2 times 2.9 becomes 5.8 minus 3, right? So 5.8 minus 3 is 2.8. Guys, can you see that the answers are equal? Can you see E of 2x minus 3 is also 2.8? 2 times Ex minus 3 is also 2.8. And therefore, what can we verify? Therefore, expected value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 2 times the expected value of x minus 3. So I was able to prove it. Can you see? Okay, so we were trying to prove this equation through a simple example and that's what we did over here. Okay, so uh, in the other questions, when they ask you to get the value of e2x minus 3, you really don't need to do, to do the proof. You can immediately use the, uh, the, the, the derived result and directly get the answer. Okay? Okay, so next I'll move to question number two. The random variable x has a probability distribution given by, so x values are given minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. The respective probabilities are also given. So write down the probability distribution for y, where y is equal to x cube. So if y is equal to x cube, what are the y values we get? When x is minus two, y equal x cube would give me what? When x is equal to minus two, y equal minus two cube, right? Gives me? y is minus 8. So when x is minus 1, what do I get for y? Minus 1 cube gives me minus 1. When x is 0, I get y equals 0 cube. That gives me y is 0. When x is 1, I get y equals x cube. That's 1 cube. y is 1. And when x is 2, I get y equal 2 cube, which gives me y is 8. Guys, are you with me? So what are our y values? Minus 8, minus 1, 0, <coughs> 1, and 8. And let's get the probability values. So what about the probability values? How do you write the respective probability values? How do you write the respective probability values? Are you going to cube the probability values? No, it's only the x value that cubes to give the y value. So basically, you get y value minus 8 when you use x as minus 2. So it's minus 2 cube. Minus 2 cube uh, is, is what gives you y as minus 8. So anyway, you get y as minus 8 when the x value occurs as minus 2. So x value occurs as minus 2, the probability is 0 0.1. So the probability is x equal uh, for y equal minus 8 is 0 0.1. Okay, so then the next value when y minus 1, y minus 1 occurs when x is minus 1, so probability value is 0 0.1. Next one, y0 occurs when x is 0, so probability of that is uh, 0 0.2, right? I'm writing the x probability value. y equals 1 when x is 1, right? So x equal 1, the probability is 0 0.4 x equals, uh, sorry, y equals 8 occurs when x is 2, when x is 2 probability is 0 0.2. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> and now uh, part A is done. Part B, they're asking you to calculate the value of EY. So EY equals, so you have the probability summation of Y into probability of Y. Minus 8 into 0 0.1 plus minus 1 into 0 0.1 
plus 0 into 0 0.2 plus 1 into 0 0.4 plus 8 into 0 0.2. What do we get here? Minus 0 0.8. Minus 0 0.1, 0 into 0 0.2 is 0, 1 into 0 0.4 is 0 0.4, 8 into 0 0.2 is 1.6. Guys, what's the addition? What is the answer? One point one. So the uh, answer expected value of y is one point one. Okay, is this clear? Okay, so now let's move to the next part. Okay, so coming back to our theory, uh, so we discussed this in detail, right? E e expected value of ax plus b is equal to a times expected value of x plus b, right? Okay, and then they say if x and y are random variables, can you see? Now, instead of working with one random variable, there are two random variables. If x and y are random variables, so then expected value of x plus y. <coughs> Can you see? Expected value of x plus y is equal to expected value of x plus expected value of y. Can you see? So, these are some main rules that you need to really learn here. Okay. And then the next main rule. You can use a similar rule to simplify variance calculations for some functions of random variables. Okay, so we are going to learn a new rule for the variance as well. If x is a random variable and a and b are constant, then variance ax plus b is equal to a square times variance x. So this is once again really important. Now previously we wrote this rule for the expected value, right? So now we are going to write this rule for the variance. So variance ax plus b, as you can see here, uh, variance, the, the, the a is the coefficient with x, right? So it becomes square. So you get a square times variance x. Can you see a square times variance x? The plus mark doesn't even come. The constant, the plus b, or even if it's a minus b, it will not come into this at all. Are you with me? So this is the next main rule. So this is really important. You need to understand, you need to uh, remember that you have to square the variable, square the constant, square the constant who is with the x. Okay. So you can, uh, you, you must square it and then you can get the variance of the transformed variable. So you can see ax plus b is the new type of variable. Maybe it's the new y. Y is ax plus b. So you get the variance of y. So you can get the variance of y instead of, uh, you know, making the table and doing the whole calculation again. You can use this simple rule to actually calculate what the variance of the new transformed variable. Okay, so directly, uh, have, what do we do here? The, whatever the value you have, the, the constant you have with x should be squared, and then you take the variance of the x. And whatever the plus or minus constant that comes over here on its own will not be affecting, it will not be affecting the variance. Okay. Okay, so now let's move to question number three. Let's do some examples and you know practice with the two rules. So what were the main rules? Expected value of ax plus b is equal to a times the expected value of x plus b. The variance of ax plus b is equal to a square times variance x. The plus b doesn't come, okay? But a expected value of 8x. Now you can see in this question, they say the random variable x has expected value 1 and variance x is 2. So basically, ex and yx are given to you. And you see the, 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 the original variable, the, x, the, the mean and variance are given to you. So expected value of 8x is 8 times ex. Do you agree according to this rule? E A X plus B, it's A times E X. So it's 8 times expected value of X. So expected value of X is 1. So 8 times 1, answer is 8. Part B, expected value of X plus 3. How does it work when you expand it using the first rule? E X plus 3, right? Separately. <laughs> e X is 1. 1 plus 3 and the answer is 4. Part C, variance x 
plus 3. So variance x plus 3, if you follow the rule, I think you can see there uh, the a value is 1 because it's 1. So it's simply uh, a square, or in this case, it's 1 square because it's just 1 x here. Are you with me? So it's 1 square times variance x. So 1 square is 1 into variance x is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Part D, variance 3x. So variance 3x, in this case, we can directly go with the rule. You can see the a value is 3. So when you take the 3 out of the uh, bracket, it becomes 3 square times variance x. Are you with me? 3 square times variance x. 3 square is 9 times variance x. So 9 times variance x is 2. 9 times 2 answer is 18. Part E. Variance 1 minus 2x. So do you recall the constant that is without the x term will not come. So that, does, that will not come. Minus 2x, so minus 2 is the coefficient of x, so that's the a value. So minus 2 will square. Minus 2 times variance of x, minus 2 square is 4 times variance x. So 4 times, what's the variance of x? Variance of x is uh, 2. So 4 times 2 and the answer is 8. Is this clear? Part f. How do you get ex square? How do we get the e of x square? e of x square, you can't use any of these three. It's x square. So you will use simply the main equation variance x is e x square minus e x. Whole thing square, right? You can't go with any other uh, rule. Right? Because we do not have the original data set here to calculate e x square by using x square into probability. We don't have the data set. So in that case, we have the variance x and the mean. So we can use both of them. Variance x is given to you in the question. Variance x is 2. E x square minus e x is the mean is e x is 1. So that should be squared. So 2 equal e x square minus e Square minus 1 square is 1, taking to the other side, 2 plus 1, that's 3. 3 equals to e x square. That's it. Is this clear? Okay. Okay, so next I'll move on to question number 8. Uh, two tetrahedral dice are rolled. The random variable x represents the result of subtracting the smallest score from the larger. So what's the random variable now? It's the subtraction of the two scores on the two dice. So basically the larger minus the smaller. That's how you get the score. Find the expected value of x and the variance of x. You can see it's seven marks. So before you actually even think of going to ex and yx, what's the first thing you should do? First, you have to make the probability distribution table. So that means you need to get all the possible values of x. So what are x? x is the subtraction of the scores, right? You have to get all possible subtraction of scores and the respective probability. So what you do here first is, you know, now we are throwing, uh, we are tossing two tetrahedral dice. So what you'll first do is, so in a tetrahedral dice, it's a dice with four sides. So you are, the, the, the four outcomes are either it's going to be one, two, three, or four. So you're throwing for two of them together. And then you need to get the scores and subtract. So what we'll do is we'll may first make the sample space. The first thing you should do here is to construct the sample space. So how do you construct the sample space? So you can make it like this, first dice and the second dice. And then what are the outcomes in the first dice? In the first dice, you could get one, two, three or four, right? And second dice, you could get one, two, three or four. Do you agree with me? And then in between, so you can see over here, what, what is this outcome? The first outcome is you get one and one from both the dice. So can you see that this table is going to show you all the possible outcomes? So this is the possibility one, one. Are you with me? Okay, let me do this. Uh, let me.
<clears throat> okay, so then uh, you can see I have kind of like quickly modified the table. So the first dice gives us the outcomes one, two, three, four. The second dice also gives me the outcomes one, two, three, four. So the first outcome here, you can see now this shows um, the sample space of all the possible outcomes. So over here, the first outcome is where you get one from the first dice and one from the second dice. And that makes our random variable x equal to what x is the larger value minus a smaller value. The scores you subtract so the subtraction of the two scores will be zero can you see for this x will be zero let's go here always it should be the large value minus small value because that's what they say here okay so then um, here the first dice gives me one second dice gives two so this outcome is it's one two right so what is the x value the x value is two minus one that's one here the x value is three minus one that's two x value is 4 minus 1, that's 3. Over here, the x value is a larger value minus small because the first dice gives us 2, the second dice gives me 1 in this outcome. First dice gives 2, second dice gives 1, so subtraction 2 minus 1 is 1. Larger value minus a smaller value. 2 minus 2 is a 0, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2. Over here, 3 minus 2 is, uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 3, uh, 4 minus 3 should be 1. This one, 4 minus 1 is 3, 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 3 is 1, 4 minus 4 will be 0. Can you see all the possible x values? Okay, and now, time to build the probability distribution. So, probability distribution. Write all the x values with the respective probabilities. What are the possible x values we have? The lowest x value I have here is 0. Can you see? The next x value I have here is 1. And the next x, another, the next x value is 2. And then that's 3. 0, 1, 2, and 3. Do you see? And let's get the probability of x. So when x is 0, what's the probability? Adi, you can see in this table, you can see all the possible outcomes. So altogether, there are how many outcomes? 4 times 4, there are 16 outcomes. So to get 0, I think you can see 0, we get in how many options? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 chances out of 16, which comes down to 1 over 4. 1. So I think you can see we get 1 in how many options? x is 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So 6 out of 16, which simplifies to 3 over 8. And x is 2, I think we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 out of 16, which gives 1 over 4. And x is 3, I get in only in the last two options. That's 2 out of 16, which gives 1 over 8. Can you see this is the probability distribution. So using the probability distribution, you're supposed to get the expected value of x and the variance of x. Okay, so let's, uh, the table is done. So now let's go for the expected value and the probability. So expected value is the summation of x into probability of x. So x is 0 into 1 over 4. x1, 1 into 3 over 8. 2 into 1 over 4. Plus 3 into 1 over 8. How much is it? <clears throat> 5 over 4. Or in other words, 1 point. 2, 5, right? Shall we also get variance x? To get variance x, what do we require? First, we need e x square. So, summation of x square into probability of x. So, x square is 0 square. You multiply 0 square into probability of x is 1 over 4. 
plus one square into three over eight. Just multiply the, the square of the x value with the probability. Plus two square into one over four. Plus three square into one over eight. Are you with me? So zero into one over four is zero. One square into three over eight is three over eight. Two square into one over four, that's four over four, that's one. Three square into one over eight, that's nine into one over eight, nine over eight. How much is the addition? Five over two. Time to go for variance x. So variance x is equal to e x square. Minus EX holding square. So EX square is 5 over 2. EX is 5 over 4 holding square. How much is it? 5 over 2 minus 25 over 16. R is 5 over 2. Okay, so moving on to the next part, the random variable y and v are defined as <coughs> y equal 2 to the power x and v equal 4x plus 1 over 2. Show that expected value of y is equal to expected value of z. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, let's quickly make the table for y. Part B, y is equal to 2 to the power x. So let's get the x value, let's get the y value and let's get the probability of y. Okay, I'm going to do all of them in one go. So what are x values? 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? All right, so when x is 0, the y value is 2 to the power 0. 2 to the power 0 is 1. Next one, 2 to the power 1, that's 2. 2 to the power 2 is 4. 2 to the power 3 is 8. And what about the probability values? You know the probability values, you get the, the y values, are, you get these y values for the respective x values. So give the respective x values probability. So 0, uh, y is 1 when x is 0. So x is 0, probability 1 over 4. Next one, when x is 1, the probability 3 over 8. x2, probability is 1 over 4. Next one, 1 over 8. Is this okay? And you can calculate now the expected value of y is summation of y into probability of y. So y is 1. Guys, use the y value and the probability of the y value. 1 into 1 over 4 plus 2 into 3 over 8 plus 4 into 1 over 4 plus 8 into 1 over 8. How much is the answer? Yeah, we get the value here. 3. Next one for z, z equal 4x plus 1 over 2. Now, unlike y equal 2 to the power x, because uh, this we can, of course, follow the uh, ax plus b type format, isn't it? You can see z equals 4x plus 1 over 2. Four x plus one over two, right? So you could, you know, get the expected value in a really short way <clears throat> by breaking it up like, right? Four x over two is two x plus half. And if you wanted the expected value of z, okay, so you can go for expected value of two x plus half. Are you with me? Okay, because this follows now. Now the previous one I didn't go it because it didn't follow the format. X was a power. Then we could not go in that manner. But this follows the linear format, ax plus b format. So we can go here two times 
expected value of x plus half. So two times, what was the expected value of x? The expected value of x was five over four. Five over four plus half. Two into five over four is five over two plus half. Five over two plus one over two, that's six over two. So that gives us three. Can you see the expected value of z and the expected value of y are equal? So that's one way of getting all the other ways. You could actually construct the table for z value and compare and get the answer. Okay, so expected value of y equal expected value of z and both are equal to three. <clears throat> Part C, uh, find variance Z. So to get variance Z, again, you can see when it comes to the Z variable, it follows the AX plus B format. So we can go with uh, the shortcut, right? So you're supposed to find variance of Z in part C. So what did we find about Z? We know Z is equal to 2X plus half. Are you with me? So which means you get the variance of 2X plus half. Now let's use the variance AX plus B rule. Do you recall what we did a moment ago? So the rule was this becomes the A coefficient, the X coefficient will square. So that's A, A becomes squared. A square times YX, the plus B doesn't come. So over here, when you square it, it becomes uh, two square is four times. YX, the plus half doesn't come into this. <clears throat> so we get here four times, what's variance X? Variance x was 15 over 16. So what is 4 times 15 over 16? That's 15 over 4. So this is the variance of z. Okay, so let's move on to exercise 6F, question number one. X is a discrete random variable. The random variable capital Y is defined as Y equal 4X minus 6. So then uh, they have told you here Y equals to 4X minus 6. So expected value of Y. They're asking you, they are given that expected value of Y is 2 and variance of Y is 32 find expected value of x. So how do we do this? Let's take the expected value of both the sides. So expected value of y is equal to expected value of 4x minus 6, right? So expected value of y is equal to 4 times the expected value of x minus 6. All right, so expected value of y is 2 equals 4 times the expected value of x minus 6. Make EX the subject. So 2 plus 6 equals 4 times the expected value. So 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 divided by 4 equals to expected value of X. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So EX is equal to 2. Okay, so expected value of X is equal to 2. Part B, they want you to get the variance Y. So how do you get variance Y? We know Y equals to 4X minus 6. So variance Y equals variance 4X minus 6. So 4 square into variance X. You know the rule, the, uh, the coefficient of X gets squared. So 4 square into variance X is equal to variance Y. So 4 square is 16 into variance x is uh, 30, uh, sorry, variance x is what we are trying to find. Variance y is given to us as 32. So 32 divided by 16 equals to variance x. 32 divided by 16 is 2. Variance x is equal to 2. Next part, see, they ask you to get the standard deviation of x. How do you get the standard deviation of x? Standard deviation is the square root of variance. So variance x is 2. So 
it's root 2. Basically, standard deviation is square root of 2. Okay, so next time uh, choosing to do question number four in this particular uh, exercise. The discrete random variable x has a probability distribution given by, so x values are 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, and the probabilities. So you can see the first two probabilities are a and b, unknown, and the probability that x is 270 is 0 0.3, okay? The random variable y is defined as y equals sine x. Find the range of possible values of EY. Okay, so let's get the values. So if X is 90, what is the value of Y? When X is 90, Y equals to sine 90, right? What's the value of sine 90? Sine 90 is 1. <clears throat> and if X is 180, Y is sine 180, which is? How much? Zero. And when X is 270, Y equals sine 270, which is Y equal minus one. So if you make the probability distribution for Y, Y values are one, zero, and minus one. And the probability is Y, you get Y equal 1 when X is 90. So X is 90 is when X probability is A. You get Y as 0 when X is 180. X is 180, the probability of X being 180 is B. And you get Y minus 1 when X is 270. The probability that X becomes 270 is 0 0.3. <clears throat> so this is the probability distribution. All right, so now uh, we have fully defined the random variable y along with its probability distribution. Okay, so they're asking us in part A, find the range of possible values of EY. They're asking you to find the range of possible values, like what are possibly the values I could get for EY. Okay, so let's get, uh, let's first calculate the expected value of y. How do you get expected value of y? You multiply the y into the respective probability. So probability y value is 1 into probability a plus 0 into b minus 1 into 0 0.3. 1 into a is 1a. Zero into b is 0 minus 1 into 0.3 is minus 0.3. So which means expected value of y is a minus 0 0.3. So basically, you are supposed to find the maximum, the biggest possible answer you could get for a minus 0 0.3 and the smallest possible value you could get for a minus 0 0.3. So in other words, you need to actually to find the range of possible values of EY. You have to find what? The range of possible values for A. Like what's the biggest value you can get for A and what's the smallest value that you could possibly get for A. Okay, how do we get the possible range of possible values by A? Now, you know, A, B, and point three are the probabilities, right? So, which means I can write another equation concerning the total probability. A plus B plus 0 0.3 is equal to 1. So, A plus B equals to 1 minus 0 0.3. A plus B is 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. Are you with me? Okay, now what's the, now you can see the A plus B probability adds up to give 0.7, isn't it? Okay, now what's the biggest possible value I can get for A from here? The maximum A value I can get is how much? 0 0.7. Why? You can get the maximum A value if the probability B becomes 0. This is when B, B becomes 0, isn't it? If B is 0, which means this doesn't occur, this particular event. So if B is 0, you get the maximum uh, a max when B is zero. So you get the maximum A value as 0 0.7. Are you with me? And what about the smallest A value? Of course, the minimum A value is directly zero. It can just be zero. 
That's the smallest value you could possibly get for it. Isn't it? Okay, now let's use them over here. The range of x value. So when, x, uh, when a is a maximum of 0 0.7, what is the expected value? a minus 0.3. So 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 answer is 0 0.4. Are you with me? And when a is a minimum of 0, what's the expected value of y? It's a... Uh, yeah, what do we get for the minimum uh, value of uh, y? I mean, this, this becomes 0 minus 0 0.3, right? So we get minus 0 0.3. Guys, can you see how this varies now? Because you know the a value is varying between these two. So yeah, expected value, we just found the boundaries of our expected value. So yeah, expected value will vary between where? Minus 0 0.3 and plus. 0.4. So it varies between these two. Is this clear? Part B, given that EY equals 0 0.2, write the values of A and B. So if EY is 0 0.2, So 0 0.2 equals a minus 0.3. So 0.5 equals to a. Are you with me? So a is equal to 0.5. How do we get uh, the value of a and b, right? So b value we can get by using the fact that a plus b is 0 0.7. So a plus b is 0 0.7. a is 0 0.5 plus b. So b is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.5. b is 0 0.2. So we have the values of our A and B. Okay, I hope this is clear with everyone. 